Ja, ich möchte Sie recht herzlich begrüßen zur vorletzten Runde. Mein Name ist Henning von Bagen. Ich bin der Kollege von Gitti Henschel im Gunder-Werner-Institut. Wir haben jetzt auf der Tagesordnung äh, den Punkt, äh, ja, eine Zusammenfassung zu versuchen und auch äh, Herausforderungen, Anforderungen zu formulieren. Aber bevor wir das tun, möchte ich noch eine kurze Programmänderung, die wir geplant haben, mitteilen. Äh, wir versuchen, die eigentlich für nach dem Mittagessen geplante Podiumsdiskussion vor das Mittagessen zu verlegen. Hängt so ein bisschen davon ab, wann Katharina Denise kommt. Wir planen also ungefähr um zwölf, Viertel nach zwölf mit der abschließenden Podiumsdiskussion zu beginnen und werden vorab hier unsere gesammelten Schlussfolgerungen hier präsentieren und mit Ihnen zusammen diskutieren. Wir, das sind vor allen Dingen Petra Bless. Petra Bless ist Gründungsmitglied des Frauensicherheitsrates, ist auch Mit- oder Co-Gründerin äh, ja, des unabhängigen Frauenverbandes in Ostdeutschland. Sie war zwölf Jahre äh, Mitglied des Bundestages, davon auch vier Jahre Vizepräsidentin des Bundestages, arbeitet seit 2003 als Freelancerin, äh, als politische Beraterin, in unterschiedlichsten Kontexten, vor allen Dingen mit dem Fokus auf Südosteuropa und zurzeit vor allen Dingen in Albanien. Petra wird vor allen Dingen jetzt hier die Zusammenfassung machen. Ich werde etwas assistieren und dann schauen wir mal. Sagst du noch was zur Programmänderung? Habe ich gerade. Hast du gleich? Okay, alles klar. Das ist okay. Das ist okay. So. Uh, okay, I like to switch uh, over uh, to our common language, to the English language. And uh, of course, we have uh, a huge responsibility uh, now to summarize uh, these tremendous and deeply uh, uh, and also emotionally debates during the last now three days already. Uh, and uh, I would say the, the code of our uh, current uh, discussion should be now GSSP 6922. Of course, it looks and sounds uh, uh, very suspect, but this is nothing else uh, than the addition of all the four famous uh, UN security resolutions. <laughs> And we know we have only one aim, uh, to create step-by-step -step, uh, gender-sensitive uh, security policy. So I like to start uh, to uh, remind all of us again, uh, also if I'm, I'm quite sure that uh, all of you are quite familiar with all the four resolution, uh, but uh, I, th I think uh, one told, I th was it Barbara in the beginning, or uh, that uh, even our uh, experts in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs uh, sometimes uh, uh, look and, and never heard uh, what is UN Resolution 1325. Uh, so I like uh, to point out uh, again and again uh, the main uh, issues connected with the four different UN security resolutions. Uh, we know that the main issue is to gender mainstream the security policy and uh, I like to mention in this framework only the three famous P's, it means participation of women. Uh, prevention, which means also uh, automatically this gender mainstreaming of security policy and the protection of uh, women and girls. Second resolution is uh, the UN resolution uh, 1820, uh, adopted in the UN Security Council in the year 2008. And The main issue of this resolution is uh, the uh, acknowledgement that uh, the, uh, there is still a systematic sexual violence and most important that uh, this phenomenon is identified as a war tactic and we know parallel the uh, development in the International uh, Criminal Court of course. And uh, I think one step forward, so a kind of concretization of this uh, item of protection from 1325 is uh, that in this re uh, UN security resolution, sanctions against countries uh, not fighting sexual uh, violence and conflicts are, are mentioned. 
the third resolution is uh, the UN resolution 1888 adopted in the year 2009 and we can see uh, uh, it's no closer this uh, the phenomenon that the UN Security uh, Council dealt with these uh, resolutions uh, here uh, uh, it was an acknowledgement about the ongoing sexual violence and conflicts I think especially what was happened in Congo was a reason for that and uh, because uh, we always recognize that uh, still a lot of things in our basic resolution are not so concrete formulated, uh, the creation of a new and special representative for sexual vi uh, violence and conflicts uh, was here uh, demanded. And we know that in the meantime, uh, we have also with Margaret Wallström, a uh, 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 powerful woman in this position. And the last one. Maybe leave her here oben, damit wir ein bisschen Platz haben. Uh, is the UN Security Resolution 1889, also from the same year, uh, 2009. And uh, this, uh, uh, in this resolution uh, was uh, pushed again the increase, uh, the necessary increase of the participation of women in peace process. And I would say most important and hopefully in the discussion we will have, we will concentrate a little bit uh, on this uh, uh, really added value, uh, uh, the demand for a list of indicators for the implementation of the UN Resolution 1325. So um, this was like the basic, and I'm, I'm quite sure that uh, all I could call all of you in the morning at three o'clock and ask you, and everybody knows it. Uh, but but we have to be more, of course. Uh, so I I like uh, to make a kind of exercise now. Um, I, I try to summarize the debates. Of course, I couldn't participate in all the fora and, and workshops yesterday, uh, and I made the decision uh, to share it into four uh, different items and the first is um, what was interesting during the three days concerning the analysis. Yeah. Uh, what I and, and uh, sorry, I, I'm I'm not a neutral person. Of course, I also give my, uh, small comments. Of course, I think what I really uh, like that uh, we had uh, during all the debates uh, a very uh, a political approach, uh, and this means that from a lot of participants, uh, we recognize the increasing violence against uh, women as an impact of the neoliberal globalization and the wars. Uh, one thing I think, and this is maybe one of the uh, most successful uh, findings uh, after 10 years of the ex existence of, I say, our resolution, is that sexual violence is recognized as a war crime. And especially in the in the international uh, treaty that it's fixed as an international commitment. Um, I think even if it looks very very simple, but uh, it was great that it was always mentioned that we are especially in this field of security policy we are always speaking and dealing with power hierarchies. Uh, and I think really added value of our debate and I understood it really as a beginning uh, to deal and to discuss about this was to uh, start also to define what is militarized masculinity. Um, uh, very important for us here in Europe, and I, I think especially because of the increasing number of EU missions, uh, it's important uh, for, for the whole world, is that the EU now has a political commitment and the legal obligation to implement 1325. It's, a, it's a, I think, a very good and important base for our work. But on the other hand, uh, to break down this kind of optimism, uh, all of us know that uh, such kind of normatives are no guarantee for a good practice. 
um, especially by the um, representatives and speakers coming from Liberia, from Afghanistan, from Iraq, was all, uh, always mentioned uh, the role of the international community in pushing the gender approach. And uh, it was basically also a very critical assessment you made. Um, if we speak about peace missions, we have to recognize always that all missions and more and more have a very complex mandate. So it's our turn to push this gender approach, of course, here. <laughs> Uh, in the uh, evening debate, uh, I think it was uh, very clear pointed out that uh, there's also a kind of danger to use or to abuse uh, the whole feminist uh, approach in this way that women's rights are justification for military intervention. I think you understand that I don't give big comments for, for all these items now. And um, I think it was uh, Barbara uh, yesterday also uh, uh, you explained it, that women's rights are always first relinquished uh, when we start uh, uh, the, uh, to have a kind of agenda and prioritization at the international agenda. Uh, I, I try to uh, uh, find out also from the material of the fora from last week tonight and today in the morning uh, still some ideas. That's why they have a different color, but it's no special uh, um, um, uh, importance. Um, I think uh, in one working group was pointed out the interconnection of militarism and traditional gender roles especially. And uh, that the concept of masculinity is uh, linked to the concept of victimization. And I think especially because we, we have this gender approach and a feminist approach, uh, uh, I think it was good to point out that sexual violence is uh, happened uh, against civilians and also to start a debate how we should define it uh, because of the also existing uh, violence against men. It doesn't mean that we put uh, uh, the, the main uh, affected population, the female population, in the second role, but uh, I think uh, it's a point to discuss. So, da sind wir jetzt over. Hm? Super. Jetzt machen wir das da und die Trainings zum Schluss hier hin. Ne? Ja, okay. So, then I would switch uh, to the second point, to the needs. And uh, there, of course, more than the, the analytical points I pointed out. Uh, first, uh, I would start with some basics. Uh, I liked it very much because it's really now uh, the 10th birthday of our resolution uh, to have this kind of slogan or motto, launching a new decade of implementation of 1325. Of course, the ongoing uh, challenge we are confronted with is uh, to create a sustainable peace policy with a focus on women and men. And uh, uh, to come back to this analytical point, that it was a quite political debate we had, of course, during the uh, two days. Uh, I liked it, uh, the formulation uh, that uh, the approach should be the creation of different structures in the society and to take gender equality as a clear measure. So that's zusammen. Right? So concerning the necessary strategy, uh, three points I found very remarkable. The first is to have a comprehensive approach. Uh, the second, that it's always necessary to have for us uh, as activists a communication strategy. And uh, that these visions, and that's why I like it very much that we have this debate now, or this conclusion after the visions given by the three friends and colleagues of us, that we have to uh, translate our visions into policy. Of course, we will have a tremendous job to <laughs> translate the three given uh, visions uh, into policy. Uh, 
uh, coming now to some necessary aims. Uh, uh, this is not a new one, of course, uh, to start a new understanding of security, especially for the peace missions. And I think uh, if, if we follow the debates we organized in the framework of, of the Heinrich Böll Foundation during the last, now we can say, decade on human security, this is a point uh, which is very important. Uh, yeah, this is like never-ending story, changing gender stereotypes. Uh, I have to say sorry to some very simple things, but uh, we still need to deal with them. Um, especially from uh, the women uh, coming uh, from uh, conflict and post-conflict uh, regions, uh, it is uh, something which, which we have to have in mind, especially we uh, on the we so-called Western side, the necessity to establish the rule of law as a basic uh, uh, to deal uh, in, in any other issues. Um, very important is that, uh, and, and we know that this is like the basic lack concerning uh, the, the still not full implementation of, of 1325 is to uh, create a political will among the really political actors, of course. And uh, in this debate about the um, uh, masculinity, uh, uh, we pointed out the, the main issue to demilitarize the masculinity. Concerning uh, the debate, the ongoing debate on gender mainstreaming, um, it's it's no no uh, big surprise uh, uh, to to uh, uh, bring it to the point that it's necessary to come out of the so-called ghettoization uh, of of our debate. That this kind of mainstreaming is necessary. It means that we have to bring uh, this gender perspective into the uh, so-called hardcore security debates and, and defense debate and debates in foreign affairs, of course. So this means nothing else than integrating the feminist perspective and uh, to pay attention that we have gender-based uh, programs. But uh, concerning these three points, I think the basic secret is uh, and I like to formulate it as a question. Are we able to explain the really added value of the gender perspective really in, in all these uh, discussions and debates? Because this is the m main leg. You are then in these strong debates always ask, uh, what is this added value you bring if you have more women on the table, if you have a genderized program and so on? I think basically it's easy, but then it has to come to the right moment, of course. So coming to some uh, necessary methods, uh, this was uh, outspoken, I think, by all participants. It's necessary that the indicators have to break down to small communities and also to the day-by-day -day used language. And of course, and we will always uh, uh, show this uh, button in front, uh, there is a strong need and now it's uh, adopted in, in, in the uh, UN Security Papers, uh, Security Council Papers in the uh, officially EU uh, adopted documents. There is a need of national as well as regional action plans on 1325. I don't like to spend a lot of energy uh, in, in which developing country in this field we are living here in Germany. Some concrete steps uh, always mentioned, uh, and they are basically already mentioned in 1325. It's the increase of number of women in, in missions. Getting more women on the tables, it means uh, in peace negotiations. And I think it was uh, our friend from Israel in the first evening. I liked it very much uh, that she um, uh, mentioned it as a problem, this phenomenon and this procedure to select the right women uh, to, uh, to enter, in, as well as into missions, but especially for the negotiations. And of course, it was also the issue in, in Afghanistan uh, recently. 
So finally, uh, um, uh, some ob obstacles we have to overcome uh, were mentioned. Das sind jetzt so eine niedlichen kleinen. Uh, f first, I would mention here the weak state and the weak governance. Still existing values, but also existing culture and tradition. Uh, and it doesn't mean uh, to say bye bye to all of them, but to recognize uh, uh, these phenomena in the society. Uh, and also to recognize, especially uh, in, in conflict countries, the bad infrastructure. Uh, I think it was uh, our colleague from Liberia who mentioned the, the not existing access for, uh, for women to, to info basic information, for example. And uh, it, it looks a little bit uh, simple, but I had no idea how to describe it in another way, uh, to have a one-dimensional focus. And uh, uh, my understanding is, for example, in the debate we had in the first evening, um, uh, where from especially concerning the Middle East conflict, it was told uh, uh, from the Palestinian side, we have this focus of the security issue. Or I note from Kosovo during before the independence of Kosovo, we have this independence issue. It means gender is not so important. Uh, but this is exactly a big mistake, and that's why I spoke, uh, I, I put it into the obstacles. It also doesn't mean not to respect this uh, like overarching pressure these uh, women confronted with in the conflict area, but I think uh, it's not a resistance uh, uh, to be engaged in, in, in women's issues. Uh, some additionally uh, needs uh, pointed out by the uh, working groups. Uh, sorry, it's not so structured now because I just got it in the morning. Um, uh, but I think it's very important. I think it was um, uh, spoken out by, by our colleague from Serbia, from the women in black, uh, the need to reach the women behind the well-educated urban elite. I think all of us know what does it mean. Um, and uh, of course, I, but I think in this room it's no, uh, no uh, danger uh, for mis to be misunderstood here. Um, uh, the women in black, they um, uh, um, are, I think, uh, so an excellent example uh, uh, how to use the traditional mother role uh, in, a, in a way uh, to deal with this traditional role uh, as peace and feminist activists. So I think there could be a lot of people on earth who could uh, completely misunderstood this one, but I think it's clear in which direction it, the understanding is. Uh, main thing, I think we had it here already, con the necessity of a communication strategy going public. It means we have to be visible with our demands. And uh, uh, that's why I think uh, the, the added uh, quality of our ongoing debates uh, during the last decades uh, to, to push a gender perspective and uh, come away uh, from, I would say, very traditionally uh, women's policy, the necessary involvement of men in the activities was pointed out. And uh, s uh, quite similar here is to n have a uh, gender-specific support for victims, and it means also then to include uh, the male vict uh, uh, victims, uh, the men who were confronted with sexual abuse. So hopefully you are still able to <laughs> to take the methods. It's it's a lot, but this is your substance. Yeah, I, I have to thank the whole audience for that. So coming then to the methods. Yeah, yeah. Don't, don't. Uh, I, I don't know with whom I had yesterday this debate. Uh, 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 the first reaction, ah, oh, this is a typical stereotype. I brought it in, in, in uh, like brackets, uh, but I liked it. Some of the participants said women has to be the agents of change and uh, we should have it in, in our minds, I think. <laughs> so some basics. Um, it's in any case necessary to have always this conceptual challenge. A strategic approach and what we already had uh, in the, with the needs, the translation of the different key messages uh, to the local daily language, because otherwise we don't uh, reach the people. 
um, especially I think during the uh, first uh, welcome debate and um, um, uh, after the listening to the experience of our colleague from Liberia, uh, the need to have a sectoral approach. It means to pay attention on the different decision-making levels was pointed out. Also, the uh, uh, need uh, to have a kind of intersectionality approach, uh, and I think uh, the, all the experience we had in, in gender research, gender politics, are a good example for that. And, of course, last but not least here, the, uh, to have always in mind the local perception. Concerning uh, uh, the uh, um, implementation of our four resolution, uh, of course, uh, the main method we, we are, uh, which is demanded is to integrate the gender perspective in peace and security policy. Put 13.25 on the political agenda. And uh, we know it at all the different levels. It means, for example, in, in, in your different parliaments in, in your respective countries, that such a point as a general approach of uh, security policy shouldn't be discussed during the night hours and so on. Uh, to use the UN Resolution 1325 uh, to lobby and to advocate for women's participation. Alles dazu so. And uh, I think uh, basically the last two, three years, the main focus, and it was right, and is still right, is uh, to have the focus on the monitoring and evaluation of the implementation of the resolution. And uh, so the key here is to have the benchmarks and indicators for the implementation, and I, I'm sure that our debate will focus on that. Uh, concerning uh, the gender mainstream approach, um, I think uh, following also this intersectionality uh, uh, challenges, the development of interdisciplinary and cross-cutting strategies. And uh, I'm, in this way, I'm really thankful uh, to the Heinrich Böll Foundation, who was always trying, sometimes with more, sometimes with less success, to involve representatives from the Ministry of Defense uh, or um, uh, uh, experts involved in peace missions and so on. And I think this dialogue is very uh, necessary uh, to in reinforce the gender mainstreaming in general and to have very clear gender mainstreaming guidelines. And I, I think in the same case as we, we uh, combine 1325 with three, uh, the three Ps, I think uh, it's always good to have in, 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 in the brain, in the back, uh, which three main items are in, in any kind of security debates from the gender perspective so necessary. Concerning different forms of our activities, uh, I like this uh, one uh, slogan: "Resistance and dialogue." I, I think it came from the from the Middle East women. I, I'm not so sure. Of course, uh, political pressure. Without uh, them, nothing would be happened. Uh, Grassroots work in, in such a uh, uh, collegium like ours, I think uh, it's quite clear. And I think a good model of uh, combination of grassroots work and professional work is the creation of shadow reports. And I must say uh, that the NGO community worldwide concerning uh, 1325 in general uh, is really uh, uh, the community with the most ex uh, expertise in this field, I think. Yeah, CEDO and, and, and 1325. Yeah, CEDO uh, shadow reporting is, is quite, quite more di developed, but I think in the meantime we have also good shadow reports uh, concerning implementation of 1325. But uh, uh, parallel, I, I think uh, also in this uh, field, women and security, it's similar uh, to the whole history of women's movement and fighting for institutionalized gender equality mechanisms to institutionalized mechanisms and structures. I 
I like that what our colleague from Liberia explained, the different commissions, committees at different levels. And of course, sometimes you say, oh, there's still another additional structure, but we know it's a kind of also protection to save it on the agenda if it's established. So uh, coming to the networking, um, the cooperation and the political dialogue are, uh, of course, the main priorities here. So it's consecration plan now. Uh, I liked it very much. I think it came also from the Middle East, this uh, slogan from learning from each other. And uh, uh, this came out, I think, from our friends from the Women in Black in Serbia, bringing back the links between communities. It means uh, communities which were in war, which are still in war, or are confronted with a post-conflict situation. So, I'm just ready. So, uh, finally, the target groups. And uh, I think it's quite clear that we always have to have in mind the involvement of the civil society. But in the same way, of course, the involvement of the political decision makers. I think a real, for me, new aspect uh, in this framework was that it was pointed out, uh, and it was an interesting phenomenon by different regions, the need to work with the youth. And uh, uh, two <coughs> points, I think it was also um, uh, in the uh, Serbia work, uh, Kosovo workshop, uh, the work with deserters and the work with victims, and I liked especially to say to uh, become active, uh, so uh, to work with victims that they become activists. And, and this is, uh, I think, a, sh a wonderful motto even if it's quite hard, but, uh, and of course I thought first of all on the powerful women in, in Bosnia-Herzegovina here. Uh, we always have to t have in mind the link to CEDO, the Convention on the Elimination of All Forms of Discrimination Against Women, and uh, the Millennium Development Goals, of course. And it's always something you can push <coughs> because these are strong documents. So. Most of the business is done, it's only some final. Wollen wir die hier machen oder da? Das ist nicht mehr so viel. Hier Mitte war besser. Okay. So finally, uh, it's uh, not uh, so much. Uh, some uh, points concerning the necessary trainings. It's quite clear for all of us that 1325 has a clear educational tool. That the gender awareness in general has to be increased. But, and this is, I think, so a little bit the added value after this starting debate on uh, masculinity, uh, that we need special masculinity trainings. I pointed in brackets. But that there is a need for adequate design of the trainings. And here I think, uh, uh, especially if we are uh, dealing with, with such uh, uh, post-conflict areas as in Southeastern Europe, for example, uh, there is a strong need to use the now existing local expertise. And I think uh, uh, Nadia was it also from Iraq. There are such a lot of great, educated, trained uh, women now already uh, at the local level and they have to be trainers and they are lucky to be trainers uh, uh, by the way on, on Monday and Tuesday I made trainings with women uh, from the municipalities uh, in Albania and it was fantastic because I would say half of the participants were willing to be trainers during the next training and this is I think really the right understanding of empowerment um, so I think I, I, I should start uh, uh, finish now uh, because uh, I still have some remarks concerning the visions, but it's so fresh in our minds, so I don't think that it's necessary. Huh? Okay. So.